This is geometry working on unit four, congruent figures, the second day. What we're looking for here is that triangle ALX is congruent to triangle GIW. What we can do with that is angle A and G. You could use a color and say angle G is a blue color angle A is a blue color and give them the same number of tick marks. L and I would need the same number of tick marks. And you can use a different color for that. And then the last letter and the last letter, the X and the W might have the same number of tick marks for that with a third color. So that could help us. When we talk about what are the corresponding parts, LX, where LX is the last two letters, we're going to use the last two letters. Or you could think about it as from the red to the gray, from the red to the gray, IW, IW. I like using the congruent statement. Just grab the letters in the same position. Angle A, that's the blue angle. You know that that's going to be congruent to the blue angle. Or A is the first letter. G is the first letter. Now here, this is a little bit different. This has an equal sign. The equal sign is telling us that we are looking for a number. A congruent symbol is looking for the same size and shape. We need to find a letter that's going to match it. But in this case, with the equal sign, we are looking for a number. So IW, we've actually already talked about IW. That's from the gray and the red. We're looking for that measurement, which is supposed to be the same as the other triangle, which is 4. So since IW is congruent to LX, LX is 4, so IW is also 4. And you can put centimeters next to it. Here we're looking for one of the six ways to write the triangle as a congruence statement. This here is called a congruence statement. Triangle LAX... L-A-X, red, blue, gray, we're going to go red, blue, gray, I-G-W. Now you could also look up in the original congruent statement, L-A-X was the middle, the first, and the last. So we need to use the middle, the first, and the last. I-G-W. I-G-W. Angle I is the middle letter, so it's going to be congruent to L, which is the middle letter. Or red and red. Here they're using an equal sign. You've got to be observant. You've got to look for those little parts that are telling you what type of answer to give. This is asking for an angle for the measure of angle A. We don't know the measure of angle A, except we've learned that angle A is congruent to G. The blue is congruent to the blue. If G is 55, then A is 55. 55 degrees. Angle L is red, so it must be congruent to the other angle that's red, uh-oh, I don't have that measurement. But if G is 55 and A is 55, we can bring that over here. So these are both 55, or 55 and 92. Together, 92 and 55, when we add those two up, we get 147 degrees. Together, we know a triangle is going to add up to 180. So that's going to be 33 degrees for our missing angle. So
So 33 degrees for that missing value. Here we're looking at these two triangles. We're supposed to write a congruent statement for any figure that can be proven congruent. So as we look at this one, the way that we prove triangles congruent at the moment is if all three angles are congruent to the corresponding parts of all three angles. We have one set that are congruent, but I don't know about the other sets. They're not marked. We need to know that the corresponding angles are congruent. We don't know that. We don't know that T would be congruent to Y. There's, there's no markers on it. That's the only way we know how to do it. And the missing side's not labeled. So not enough information. So in the future, we might be able to show why these would be congruent, but currently we don't have enough information to prove that. Over here, we know that we have a one ticker and a one ticker for the angles, a two ticker and a two ticker for the angles, but I don't know about my third angles. Would there be any reason those angles must have to be congruent? If vertical angles, then congruent angles. So we have vertical angles because there's a big X being formed here. And these angles are an op pointing in opposite directions. So I know for certain that that angle is congruent to that angle. Now, I have all these corresponding parts. We can give a congruent statement. Triangle, D, G, E, one ticker, two ticker, three ticker for the angles, is congruent to triangle, one ticker, two ticker, three ticker, H, G, E. There are six correct method you could have written that in this is the method that I chose to go the one two three here we're looking at this four-sided figure so up in its congruent statement it has four letters because there are four sides or four vertices notice that there's no symbol in front of a quadrilateral it's just the four letters. FGHJ is congruent to STUV. What that tells us is that their different parts are congruent to each other. That tells us that the H is congruent to the U. They both are 90 degrees. Look here. This is given us G. G is the second letter. It has to match with the second letter which is the T. So that's why we know that 2X minus 7 has to be the same as 103. Then we can use our algebra skills. To solve for X. And we know that X would be 55. Now, this would not be 55 degrees because the X is not just an angle. It's an X value. 
2 times that minus 7 would be your degrees. Here we're looking at two triangles. They give us a congruence statement. They tell us which triangles are congruent. This helps us indicate exactly which angles or which sides match up. It's pretty simple by looking at it, but we have the 90 degree angles and we have these two acute angles. The acute angles in a right triangle are complementary. The acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So if you have angle A and angle B, you know that those are going to add up to 90 degrees. So you know that the measurement of angle A plus the measurement of angle B is going to be 90 degrees. If A is 65, we can subtract the 65 to figure out that the measurement of angle B is 25. I like to circle it up in my picture to show that I calculated that 25. And we know that angle B is the same thing as angle E in our congruence statement. So that means that Y is also 25 and that's going to be a degree. All right, letter B. Here, this one's a little tricky because you have an X here and you have an X as a point that's in the figure too, so don't get confused about what variable you're solving for. We're trying to solve for the variables, in this case, that are inside these angles. Again, this is a 90 degree angle, so this is going to be a 90 degree angle on that side. We know the acute angles in a right triangle are complementary. So we know that they're going to add up to 90 degrees. Or here, they're going to add up to 90 degrees. So here I'm going to say that the 56 and the measure of angle W equals 90 degrees. I minus my 56 over and I get 34 is the measurement of angle W. So I know that angle W is 34 degrees. If angle W is 34 degrees, well, that's going to be the same thing as Q. Q is the same thing as W. So I'm going to be able to say that 2Y is going to equal 34. When I divide by 2, I'm going to get 17. That's not going to be an angle value. That's not a degree value. That's just the y value is 17, and 2 times 17 is your angle. Now we have to figure out this one. We know that 3x minus 7 is going to equal to the 56. So 3x minus 7 is going to equal to the 56. We add the 7 across, that becomes 63, 
and when we divide, we get 21. We look down here at letter C. Letter C, this triangle has one tick mark. This triangle has two tick marks. This, or side, side has two tick marks. This side has three tick marks. So what we're going to do is look at the three tick marks and say that the 4y plus the 8 equals 24 because those are the corresponding parts that are congruent to each other. Then we would go through and do our algebra. We subtract over our eight. And we divide by the four. And we end up getting y equals four. Then we can look at the two tick marks. And we get 7x minus 4 equals 31. Plus 4, plus 4, 7x equals 35. Divide by 7, x equals 5. So y is 4 and x is 5. <laughs> Here we're looking at E. E is congruent to the A because it's the middle letter of piece. So 16x equals 112. When we divide, we find out that x equals 7. And then as we go to our last one, 3x plus 5y equals 41. 3 times 7 plus 5y equals 41. 21 plus 4y. Subtract across our 21. 5y equals 20. And y would have to be 4. 